RMP, Required Navigation Performance, is the new way of navigating and flying. It's based on the satellite system uh, where we use the GPS signals to the aircraft and we are becoming independent of any ground equipment. In the old days you needed to pass on straight lines over beacons. Now we virtually can put any, any waypoint wherever we like it to be. It's a much more flexible way of calculating and setting up the navigation as optimum as possible. The RMP is actually also the most effective way when we can tailor approaches that are the shortest and the more efficient way to uh, enter an airport and to land. We can also reduce significantly the uh, CO2 and emission and also the noise over sensitive areas. I think most of you have heard about green approaches. In the industry we call this CDA, Continuous Descent Approach. It's optimum from a pilot point of view when it comes to fuel saving and of course it's the most efficient way of doing a descent to an airport. What we are doing is calculating through the FMS the optimum point where to start the descent and then to be flying the descent with idle power all the way down to approach. To compute this uh, in an optimum way you need actually to have the best data when it comes to atmospheric uh, situation around the airport. And the wind data is the most most important. The wind in the path that the aircraft is going to fly will be crucial for having an optimum green approach to an airport. Commercial aviation is reaching the limits of capacity for the air traffic management system. And yet, the long-term demand for growth in commercial aviation continues. The key to growth lies in the ability to accommodate more flights. This means either adding infrastructure or improving air traffic management procedures. As demand for airspace capacity grows, new and improved tools will be used to accommodate the capacity increases. In a typical approach procedure, the air traffic controller instructs a pilot to descend in steps and then fly a pattern that will space the arrival to maintain a proper distance between other aircraft. With a step descent approach, the aircraft is operating at less than optimal efficiency and usually with a delay in extra miles. The use of the stepped approach is widely used by air traffic management worldwide. Approach procedures that could manage arrivals with a high degree of predictability with optimal approach paths would increase the number of arrivals into airports while providing economic and environmental benefits. The flight management system from GE Aviation provides that high degree of accuracy and predictability, offering the opportunity for airports and airlines to begin using optimized approach procedures. The flight management system collects and sends control data to and from the aircraft systems critical to navigation and performance and manages those systems according to its assigned flight plan. The GE FMS can operate the aircraft at peak efficiency while maintaining the aircraft's position to within feet of the specified flight path and to within seconds of the required time of arrival. Because of this high reliability and predictability, Air traffic control can assign a preferred optimized descent path for aircraft equipped with these capabilities. With an FMS optimized arrival, the aircraft holds its cruising altitude right up to the top of descent, maintaining the most efficient flight profile from cruise to touchdown. When the aircraft reaches the top of descent, engine thrust is reduced and instead of descending in steps and flying at lower, less efficient altitudes along an extended approach path, the aircraft begins a continuous descent to the runway while flying a shorter path. The combined benefits of flying an FMS optimized approach are significant fuel savings, 
reduced CO2 emissions, reduced noise around the airport, improved on-time arrival performance, and increased operational efficiency. Hello, my name is Sardar Akalinli, and I'm going to talk to you a bit about the winds. In order to achieve the full potential of flying green approaches, or continuous descent approaches, you need to know which winds you're going to fly through during the descent. The Aventus Nowcast system uplinks a tailored Nowcast, which enables the FMS to pinpoint the optimum point of when to start descending from cruise, also known as top of descent. This is important because you don't want to go into the descent with too little energy. For example, if you descend too soon and fly into an area with headwind and having to add thrust at lower altitudes where the engines are less effective and you create noise and pollute. Or also, uh, you don't want to go in with too much energy. For example, if you descend too late and fly into an area with tailwind, having to deploy drag generators, removing energy that we put there in vain. The way this is done is by creating a wind grid over an airport, illustrated here. This wind grid is continuously updated as new forecasts or observations are made. The input to the wind grid can be either actual winds measured by aircraft that have landed or taken off from the airport, or forecasts from MET service providers. Aventus will update this wind grid, waiting for a subscribing aircraft to downlink its trajectory, illustrated here. This is a side view of, of that trajectory. It will then remove all the wind data points that are not relevant for this aircraft, and then do an analysis of the head tailwind components of these winds. This is what we want the aircraft to know. Currently, only five of these winds are uplinked to the aircraft. So the question is, which five do we choose? One could make it easy and use fixed levels, always uplinking the winds at the same altitudes. But there is a smarter way. Aventus uses the logic of the FMS, knowing how the aircraft uses the winds we send, to do the calculations for each possible selection of five winds, finding the optimum selection of which winds to uplink. Okay, RTA, one more of these uh, acronyms that we're using uh, in the airline industry, it's full of them. RTA stands for Required Time of Arrival. With a modern FMS as we have uh, in this Airbus, uh, we also have the fourth dimension, the time. The time will be crucial if we're going to have the most effective airspace and uh, approach procedures. In this MINT project, we're also using the time. We're going to have a required time of arrival at a specific point at 10,000 feet. And what we're going to show that we're going to reach this time within plus minus 10 seconds. And that's amazing. The cockpit crew will insert a required time of arrival. And you can do that for any point along the navigation. In this case, we're going to have a point at 10,000 feet where the time will be included. And then the FMS starts to calculate our optimum path to reach this as efficient as possible on the right time. And we can show that we do this plus minus 10 seconds. And this opens up a new field of possibility in the congested area of airspace where we see all over the world.